Hi everyone, my name is Sardi Jayakumar. In this series of videos, we'll talk about system architecture from a BIOS developer's perspective. This will be useful for driver developers as well or for anyone doing low-level system programming. So we'll start the first session with the basics, right? To see how the system memory address map. So we have the system memory address map is laid out okay as you all know x86 processors have memory address space and they have io address space right memory address space we all know is accessed via instructions such as move and io address space is accessed via instructions such as i uh, in and out instructions we are going to focus on the memory space in this session and we can talk about the I.O. space in later sessions. The memory address space of the system, how much memory address space we can support, right, all the way here. Oops. This depends on how many address bits we have, right. So if the processor can support X address bits, then the address space can span from 0 to 2 power x. Modern processors support around 40 bits. Server processors might go a bit above 40 bits and low-end processors might go slightly below 40. But for today's discussion, let's assume that the processor supports 40 bits. So the entire address space will span from 0 to 2 power 40 right which is equal to 1 terabyte the original IBM PC and PC XT which were based on 8088 processors had only 20 bits of address right so so 2 power 20 is 1 megabyte right so the original IBM PC PC XT they had only 1 megabyte of address so the first section we see here in the bottom, this one here, this is a carryover from the original IBM PC days for compatibility. That's the reason we can still boot to DOS today if required and still run some applications that were written 25 years back. This 1MB area, right, is pretty crowded. It's got a lot of things in there. The system bias, right, resides in the first 128k at the top somewhere around this area and then there are things like interrupt vector table things like bias data area smm area expansion rom area okay expansion rom area so on and so forth. So we'll look at all these in the next video. But for today's discussion, let's just assume that this area, 0 to 1 MB, is exactly mapped the same way as it was 25 years back. Okay, so let's go to the next section here. The next generation of processors were able to address up to 32 bits. Okay, so 32 bits is to power 32 we can access up to 4 gig so here we can access up to 4 gig obviously this diagram is not to scale so don't think that the size of each section here reflects the actual memory range so within the 4 gig space we are going to carve out some space for memory mapped IO or MMIO we call this MMIO low since this is below 4 gig to distinguish it from MMIO high, which is above 4 gig. We'll talk about MMIO in more detail in subsequent videos, but for now it would suffice to understand that this address range is not mapped to physical memory. This address range okay, is not mapped, not mapped to memory. In other words, Accesses to this area will not go to memory, it will go elsewhere. Now, if you look at this area here, 
right? This is backed by memory. So any accesses to this area will go to physical memory, the DRAMs, the system. But the MMIO low area and the MMIO high area are not mapped to memory. Accesses to this region will go elsewhere. So we have zero to somewhere here, okay, this area here. It's a variable range based on how much memory is populated, how much MMIO low space is needed, platform policy, etc., and will typically fall somewhere between between one to three gig. So the whole thing here is to four gig, right? Zero to four gig, and somewhere here, between one to three gig, we have something called the top of low memory. For this discussion, let's assume that the top of low memory is at two gig. Okay, two gig. What it says is that we have physical memory from zero to top of low memory, two gig in our case, and then there is a gap or a hole between top of low memory, TOLM, to four gig. Just below TOLM, this area here, we carve out another small range of memory, somewhere between eight to 32 megabytes in size for system management RAM or SM RAM, okay? So this area here is called system management RAM, also known as SM RAM. It's also called a TSEG, I'm showing here TSEG, to distinguish it from the legacy SM RAM below one meg, which was called CSEG. So in the old days, there was also a SM RAM space somewhere here. So to distinguish this SMRAM space from the legacy SMRAM space, we call this TSEG, and the old one is called CSEG. Both are system management RAM spaces. We'll have a separate session on SMI and SMRAM, but for now, it would suffice to understand that the SMRAM space is memory used exclusively by the BIOS under a special mode of operation. This memory space is not available to the operating system. In fact, it will not even appear to the OS as a memory area. And starting from 4 gig, we can have memory all the way up to 2 power 40, right? Since we are assuming 40 bits of address space. But here again, we carve out some space for MMIO. We call it MMIO high. And depending on how much memory is populated and how much memory map IO high space is needed, that will determine where we have the top of high memory. So to recap, we have memory holes in the address space. They are called memory mapped IO low for the MMIO hole below four gig and MMIO high for the hole above four gig. We have memory starting from zero all the way to top of low memory and then from four gig to the top of high memory. So let's, in the next video, look at the lower one meg space here and see what it contains. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.